Hey everyone, welcome to part 6 of the Pokemon game series in Unity. So in the previous video we looked at how to create Pokemons using scriptable objects. So in this video we will look at how to create moves of the Pokemon using scriptable objects. So we need to create a move base and a move script just like we created for the Pokemons. So I'll create a move base script. It should be a scriptable object. So we need a variable for the move of the name. Another one for the description. So I made this a text area so that we have some space to write the description. Next we need type for the move. For that we can use the Pokemon type enum that we created for the Pokemon base class. So next I need a variable for the power of the move. I need one for the accuracy and finally a one for the pp. Next let's add the create asset menu attribute so that we can create instances of this class. Okay, so now let's create some moves. So inside resources, I'll create a new folder called moves. And if we right click, go to create Pokemon, you can see a new option called create new move. I call this tackle. And we can see all the variables that we created. So let me fill this. So I'll just pause the video and create some more moves. Okay, so I've added a few more moves. So you can find the details of all these moves from Wikipedia. Okay, so now in the move base class, we need to create properties to expose these variables, just like we did in the Pokemon base class. I'll just copy paste the rest to save time. Okay, so now we have properties to expose all these variables. So next we will create the move class. So the move class will contain the data of the moves that will change during the battle. For example, the PP of the move might change during the battle. So we don't want this to be a mono behavior, it's just a plain C sharp plus. So first let's create a reference to the move base class. So this is a short way of creating properties. So if you look in the move base class, we actually created a private variable and then exposed it by using properties. So when you write in this way, C sharp will automatically create the private variable behind the scenes. So you might ask me, but if there is a short way like this, why did we not use the short way to create properties in the move base class? So the reason is because you can't use the short way when you want the variables to be shown in the inspector. So in this case, we wanted all these variables to be shown in the inspector. But here we don't want that, so that's why I use this short way. Just like a getter, we can also create a setter, which will allow us to set the value of the property. So now I'll create a property for the pp. And we will initialize this in the constructor. So now in the Pokemon base class, we need to store the list of moves the Pokemon can learn and the level at which it will learn, learn the move. This is first I'll create a class called learnable moves. So here I need a reference to the move base. 
and then we need the level at which this move will be learned. Let's create properties to expose these. And finally, in the Pokemon base class, we need a list of learnable moves. So if you haven't used list before, it's just like an array, but it comes with some, some more predefined functions, which will be useful. So I prefer using list. The only thing you have to do is that we have to make the learnable move class system.serializable. Only then it will appear in the inspector. Okay, so now let's create a property for this. So now if we look at the Pokemons we created, you can see learnable moves here. So let's add some moves for our Pokemons. I will lock this window and go to our moves folder. Let's add three moves for Bulbasaur. Okay, so Bulbasaur will have Tackle at level 1, Growl at level 4, and Fine Loop at level 7. So basically, in this list, you have to add all the moves the Pokemon can learn. And when the Pokemon reaches that level, it will be able, able to learn that move. Now let's assign moves to our Charmander. We have to unlock it. And I lock it again. We'll have three moves. At level one, Charmander will have Scratch. We can grow at level four. And Ember at level seven. So you can go ahead and add a lot more moves and assign all the moves to a Pokemon. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I just need these three. So next in the Pokemon class, we need a list of moves. So in the Pokemon base class, we only have what all moves the Pokemon can learn. But the actual moves the Pokemon has will be stored in the Pokemon class. So let's create a list for that. So again, I use the short form for properties. And in the constructor, when the Pokemon is created, we need to generate all its moves based on the level. So initially, we'll set the moves to an empty list. And then we'll loop through the learnable moves and add it to the moves list depending upon the level. So first we need to check if the level at which the move can be learned is less than or equal to the level of the Pokemon. So in this case we can add this move to our moves list. The list has an add function that will let us add items to it. And let's create a move by calling its constructor. Okay, so we don't actually don't want PP to be passed through the constructor. We have it inside the base. So here, we just have to assign it from the base. So that, that was a mistake I made. So now let's create a move. For the base, we will pass move.base. This move is actually a learnable move. So if I pass the base, I can create a new move class and add it to our moves list. So our Pokemon can only have four moves. So after adding the move, we need to check if there are four moves in the list right now. If there are more than four moves, we don't 
want to try and add more moves, we we'll just exit the loop by calling break. So to recap, when we create our Pokemon, this code will generate the moves of Pokemon based on its level. So the one thing I forgot to add while creating the Pokemon class was a variable for HP. So we have a property for the max HP, but we don't have a variable to store the current HP. So the HP can reduce during a battle and we need a variable to save that. Let's create one. So again, I used the short form for the property here. So remember, this will automatically create a private variable behind the scenes. So let's also set the HP to max HP while creating the Pokemon. So I'll stop the video here. Our Pokemon now has moves. So in the next video, we can start creating our battle system. So if you think these videos are helpful, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. That will really help me out. And I'll see you in the next video.